Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. So recently, because TikTok is weird and doing informational videos takes a lot of time but doesn't make a lot of views, I've been doing a lot of versus battles. And while I've been filming all of these versus battles, Shinra Boncho Man pops up over and over and over again. Which is interesting because we haven't gotten a new season of Fire Force for what feels like a decade now. And the manga's been over for about a year, but I feel as though a lot of people haven't read the manga. And if they have read the manga, they're not talking about it. But Fire Force and Soul Eater are two of my favorite mangas of all time. And I've personally reread the Fire Force manga two or three times. And therefore, when I talk about these versus battles and how Shinro Boncho Man Solo is your favorite anime universe, I never use those words. I get a lot of repeated questions about how strong is Shinra. What is this form, Shinra Boncho Man? How does it make him so much stronger than everybody else in anime? And while I have ranked and explained Company 8 before, I feel as though we should do an entire video dedicated to Shinra and just how strong he is. But more than anything, I also want to focus on the concept that Shinra is the embodiment of a character who starts out moderately powerful and adds quite literally a god. It's a trope that's existed for a long time in Shonen, but I gotta say, I don't think anybody's ever pulled it off as well as Fire Force. So today, we're not only gonna be talking about how strong is Shinra, aka Shinra Boncho Man, but also how Shinra became Shinra Boncho Man, and how Shinra went from just a regular Company 8 firefighter to quite literally the embodiment of God. But before we get to explaining any of that, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you like the concept of me talking about how hard certain anime characters punchy, you're probably not gonna like my anime podcast because we don't do a lot of that, but we do talk about a lot of anime. The podcast is called To Talk Is Anonymous, and me and Danny Mata break down everything that happened in anime this week. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. So before we get into all that, guys, today we gotta talk about our favorite reoccurring sponsor to the page, Squarespace. Squarespace is your one-stop shopping opportunity to build the website of your dreams. Whether that website be for a brand, a page, or a business, there is no better space than Squarespace. This could be a website selling anime merch, food, or custom stickers, it doesn't matter. There's no better place to get started than Squarespace. But I know what you're saying, you're saying, Nick, I don't have a degree in website design. I can't just sit down and make the website of my dreams. But Squarespace makes the building process not only intuitive, but incredibly easy. And building this beautiful website will not only make it easier to engage with your customers or fans, but also sell your product. And one of the tools that makes your life a heck of a whole lot easier are member areas. A tool that allows you to put content content or products behind a paywall. And only those who pay for access to those specific areas get access to that content or product, which can create an entirely new revenue stream for people like me. And speaking of things that Squarespace has that help people like me, they also offer one of the most intuitive video content creation tools on the market, which allows you without even leaving your Squarespace website to make clickable and engaging videos for your audience. An audience that you can keep track of using the analytical tools that Squarespace provides. And these analytics don't only tell you how your business is doing, but how to improve your business as you're able to find find out where site visits or sales are coming from, which can give you insight into where you need to spend your time advertising. And when you're ready to launch that perfect website, go to squarespace.com slash weebcommander for 10% off your website or domain. So what are you guys waiting for? Get out there and build the brand that you know you can. So, Shinra Boncho Man. One of the newest additions into the list of anime characters who are quite literally just God. In Shinra's defense, it did take 296 chapters for him to get there, which feels like an appropriate amount of time. But that is to say that Shinra wasn't always Shinra Boncho Man. He wasn't always God. He's the prime example of a character whose strength grows immeasurably over the course of his entire story. In the beginning, Shinra was simply a third generation pyrokinetic who was able to spout fires from the bottom of his feet. With his ability, he was able to break the sound barrier and kick off limbs and destroy the cores of infernals. He was able to pick up the weight of four separate people and fly them out of burn buildings. He, in the very beginning of the story, was still a superhuman. However, as the story progressed, Shinra continually found new things to add to his arsenal, like his rapid that he created by training with Benny Maru, where through the power of augmenting his hand into different hand signs, he was able to increase his speed tenfold while consuming less energy. And considering the fact that he could already break the sound barrier in the beginning of the anime, this made him Mach 10. And with the power of this rapid that he had learned, he was able to do things like dodge the laser beams of Nataku, who was not only shooting literal lasers, but was also a pillar, meaning they were one of the most powerful pyrokinetics on Earth. And this power also assisted him in going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a level two Captain Burns, who was revealed later in the manga was one of the strongest people in the universe. So this was only level two out of the five levels that Captain Burns is able to use. But after he developed the rapid, it was revealed to us that Shinra was the pillar of rage, meaning that the more rage that Shinra felt, the stronger he got. And once again, we were introduced to a power-up in the long list of power-ups that Shinra would receive. The power of this rage power-up allowed Shinra to battle against Captain Burns for a second time outside of a training capacity. With the power 
power of this rage, Shinra was able to achieve near light speed without an Adola link. Meaning simply on the back of his own pyrokinetic ability and not leaning on the power of the Evangelist in an Adola link, that Shinra was almost able through the jet propulsion in his feet to reach light speed and deliver a kick to Captain Burns that was able to overcome his level five transformation. And while we're not entirely sure if this is Captain Burns' final form, it is the highest level of form we ever see from Captain Burns. However, his rage power up wasn't the only thing super boosting him in this battle against Captain Burns, as Shinra also has something known as hysterical strength. See, Shinra usually only uses 30% of his pyrokinetic ability, kind of like the wives tale that humans only use 10% of their brains, or that our bodies limit us from our full physical output because if we use our full physical output at 100% will strain our muscles and bones. However, when Shinra feels cornered and feels as though death is nearby, he's able to access 100% of his pyrokinetic ability. And accessing that 100% of his pyrokinetic ability is referred to as hysterical strength. But here's the thing, after a second battle against Captain Burns, he no longer has to rely on being near death to access this hysterical strength. Meaning that on top of being the rage pillar and being super powered by rage, that Shinra now also has access to 100% of his strength around the clock. And with the use of this hysterical strength, Shinra's flames burn so hot they become blue. And Shinra, using this hysterical strength, is able to deliver a kick to the level five Captain Burns that levels him. Like I've already stated, Captain Burns is one of the strongest people in the universe. Now, with the super boosted abilities of being the rage pillar and hysterical strength, and just training with people like Benny Maru and Arthur, Shinra was already insanely powerful. So powerful that after ripping himself out of the Adola, which he was able to survive, even though the flames of the Adola are said to be as hot as the core of the sun. Shinra realized that Feyri, one of the white clads, was pulling the moon into the earth to destroy the surface of the planet. So Shinra, not wanting the earth to be destroyed, kicked his way off of earth and flew two and a half miles to the moon, as the moon was already encroaching on earth through Feyri's grab. Shinra at this point then kicks the moon back into orbit, which means not only does he overcome the gravitational pull of the Earth and Fairy on the moon, but he also, through raw strength and just his pyrokinetic ability, no Adola Link needed, is able to push a moon that weighs 16 sectillion tons back into orbit, which when you consider the fact that the force of the moon was being super amped by a person pulling the moon into the Earth, this is easily a planetary level AP. And this is Shinra long before Boncho Man. Not to mention that Shinra does this without using light speed, which would have generated infinite force. So this was kind of just on the back of the sheer amount of attack power he had at this given moment. Those who make it their day jobs to calculate these kinds of feats have calculated to say that he applied 10 trillion tons of TNT to move this moon back to orbit. 10 trillion tons of TNT. But what happens if hypothetically Shinra does get an Adola Link? For those of you who don't remember, let me explain to you what an Adola Link is. See, there's those with Adola blessings and those with Adola links. There's also those who come from the Adola. See, in the Fire Force universe, there is Earth, and then there's a parallel Earth dimension that's basically hell called the Adola. Within the confines of the Adola is a doppelganger of every single being that lives on Earth, and these doppelgangers are a reflection of the public perception of the people living on the above Earth layer. So Shinra, even though he's an incredibly nice and kind person, since everybody thinks he's a demon child who smiles in the face of his mother dying, has an incredibly evil doppelganger. Now, the person who rules over the Adola is the Evangelist. And therefore, those who reside within Adola, the doppelgangers, all have the Evangelist's blessing, meaning their pyrokinetic abilities are insane. Now, there is those on Earth who also have Adola blessings. So the best example of this that anime only people will know is Sho, Shinra's brother. He was given a blessing by the Evangelist that allows him to use his ability, Severed Universe. Now, those who are fourth generation pyrokinetics, that is, those who are able to establish an Adola link or who have been given an Adola blessing, blessing are able to generate Adola links to either those who already have Adola blessings or those who hail from Adola. This is what Shinra is. Shinra doesn't have an Adola blessing because he's actually battling against the Evangelist. Why would the Evangelist give him power? But Shinra does have the ability to form Adola links between those who have been given Adola blessings or those who come from the Adola. And through the usage of this Adola link, Shinra gets massively stronger. See, the first time that we ever really see Shinra use his Adola link is in his battle against Shinra. Sho. See, Sho, as a holder of the Adola Blessing, is able to use the power of the Evangelist to superpower his pyrokinetic abilities. And the way that Sho does this is an ability called Severed Universe. See, Severed Universe allows Sho to do something that is quite literally 
insane. See, Sho is able to cool the things around him down. As the control of flames also pertains to the control of ice. It's basically just the control of heat. Sho isn't the only person in the anime or manga who can control ice. But Sho takes cooling the things around him to a whole nother level. Because through the power of severed universe, Sho cools the entire universe. One of the intrinsic laws of thermodynamics and quantum dynamics is that everything moves towards entropy. Since the Big Bang, all matter tries to exist at a lower state of energy. The best way to describe entropy in the universe is look at this thing of lozenges. If I were to jerk this can of lozenges into the air and launch them all across the room, there is technically a chance that all of these little squares would land on top of each other and create a little tower. However, since everything in the universe is constantly moving towards entropy, there is a significantly higher chance that all of these lozenges just go all over my room. Because this, in very layman terms, the Big Bang is essentially the first massively entropic event in the universe. And all of the matter generated in the Big Bang is constantly expanding to make the universe an infinitely expanding place. However, with entropy comes heat usually. Heat accelerates entropy. It's why water boils and becomes steam. However, like I've already stated, matter likes to exist at the lowest state of energy possible. This is why we have to apply fire to water to make it steam. Now, Sho counteracts this entropy and this heat specifically as he cools the entire universe to stop the universe's expansion. And because the universe is no longer expanding, time stops. Now, this obviously requires a massive amount of energy output from Sho. Cooling down an entire universe, not the easiest thing. But in essence, it's essentially essentially the coolest way you can have time stopping abilities of all time. It's also quite possibly the most broken because to do the calculations on the amount of energy you would need to cool off an entire universe to stop time, it's insane. And it's not even just our universe, it's everything. It's reaching all sides of space simultaneously to stop space from expanding. Expanding into what, Nick? If there was nothing to begin, what could it possibly expand into? That is an entire another video. We're not doing that right now. But Shinra, through the power of an adult link, was able to overcome Sho's ability to stop time. See, Shinra, with the power of an adult link, was able to achieve light speed. Now, matter that looks like us cannot travel at the speed of light. Our bodies would break down immediately. The sheer amount of heat created created by our bodies moving through anything that wasn't a vacuum would probably create a black hole, which is actually one of the fears when Shinra moves at the speed of light. However, the way that Shinra gets around creating a black hole or having his body destroyed is having his body destroyed. See, when Shinra hits light speed, his body breaks down into subatomic particles, things like quarks, the things that make up neutrons and protons and electrons. And these subatomic particles are able to travel faster than the speed of light, which is technically impossible, but also maybe not. The most recent winners of the Nobel Prize actually showed that electron signaling may actually happen faster than the speed of light, which is terrifying. We don't really know what it means yet, but it's terrifying. Einstein left us with one rule. He actually left us with a lot of rules. But because these subatomic particles are traveling faster than the speed of light, they're able to travel reverse in time. Therefore, when these subatomic particles reach the destination that Shinra was trying to get to, they travel back in time to when Shinra's body wasn't destroyed and reform Shinra. Because technically these particles and Shinra at this current moment aren't adhering to the laws of physics, the principles of time no longer apply to them, which allows Shinra in this moment to travel travel even if time is stopped. But even that isn't the end of how strong Shinra can get. What do you mean, Nick? He can already travel through time and travel at the speed of light and break his body into subatomic particles. He kicked a planet back into orbit that was being pulled to Earth by a man who can control gravity and also the Earth. How much stronger do you need him to get? A lot apparently, because in episode 295 of the manga, Shinra decided to create a little thing known as Shinra Bancho Man. And Shinra Bancho Man, if I'm not mistaken, directly translates to Shinra, creator of all things. See, Shinra Bancho Man was created when Shinra and Sho combined their souls. But it wasn't just Shinra and Sho, they also combined with the soul of their mother, who just happens to be the doppelganger of the evangelist, which technically makes sense because every entity either on Earth or in the Adola needs a counterpart. And since the evangelist is technically just a culmination of all of the consciousness of Earth, they are technically an earthly being, which would mean they would have a doppelganger in the Adola, which happens to be Shinra and Sho's mom. And now you understand how they got so strong. So when the entire family decides to come together to be one entity, we get Shinra Bancho Man. Oh, by the way, this isn't important for telling you how strong Shinra Bancho Man is, but the way that all three of them come together is soul residence which is kind of cool and for those of you who have read or watched soul eater you'll understand that soul residence is how the miser and their weapon resonate their soul wavelengths to make each other stronger so it was a little easter egg to the fact that shinra in like 10 or so chapters is gonna create the soul eater universe which is a whole other video i've already made if you're curious about that and the power of their soul resonance is so great it creates shinra bancho man an entity that is so much stronger than the fused version of haumea and the evangelist that they basically don't even consider them an enemy i'd like to remind you at this point that the evangelist 
Consciousness is the mass collection of all of the consciousness wheels and basically all of the concepts of Earth. While there is technically a whole panel with a combined version of how May and Evangelist are like, neither of us are God, the Evangelist, for all intents and purposes, at least prior to Shinra Bancho Man showing up, is God. And Shinra Bancho Man is immeasurably stronger than that. We know Shinra Bancho Man is immeasurably stronger than how May and the Evangelist because they tried to attack Shinra Bancho Man, launching attacks that appear to blast nuclear explosions in Shinra's face that don't even budge him, shooting attacks called the Light of Despair, which is said to be able to destroy anything it touches, to which Shinra simply catches and then holds and ponders, and throws over his shoulder, and upon throwing it over his shoulder, converts it into an atmosphere for Earth. But we got a little while till we get there, so just hold on to that little tidbit of information. Shinra Bancho Man has a technique similar to Arthur's. See, we've already touched on the fact that Shinra was the pillar of rage, and therefore, when he gets really angry, he gets stronger. However, Shinra Bancho Man is exactly the opposite of that. See, Shinra Bancho Man is the physical embodiment of the savior, and therefore, the more hope that Shinra Bancho Man feels, the stronger he gets. And because of this, Shinra Bancho Man has the ability to turn despair into hope, which is how he's able to turn the despair-based attacks of Haumei and the Evangelist into hope. See, by this point in the manga, the entirety of Earth has been engulfed in the flames of the Adola. Since the Adola flames are a physical manifestation of the despair of humanity, Shinra is able to convert this despair into hope. See, with a simple stomp of his foot, he converted the entirety of Earth, which was encompassed in black flames, into flowers, terraforming the entirety of the Earth with a step. And while trying to show the evangelist that there was things to live for and that hope was significantly stronger than despair, just spawned a whale to jump out of the flowers and land in some over there. See, he has complete control over creation. It's at this point that the evangelist shoots a light of despair attack at him that's supposed to be able to destroy anything it touches. And it's at this point that Shinra catches it, ponders it, throws it over his shoulder, and gives the earth an atmosphere, creating weather currents, clouds, rain. But he doesn't stop there. Shinra is able to control all the powers of creation and manipulation through the manipulation of the powers of Adola. And therefore, he is able to reshape and recreate all of the life on Earth. Simply by slamming his hands to the ground, he's able to generate mountain ranges and bring back extinct animals. He creates migratory birds, whales, giraffes, things that hadn't existed in the world of Fire Force for a long time because they were extincted by the first great cataclysm. But he doesn't stop there because the Evangelist shoots another Light of Despair attack at him. Now, mind you, these Light of Despair attacks happen at the speed of light. However, Shinra doesn't want to catch this one. He decides to kick this one. And as he kicks this Light of Despair attack into the ground, he recreates the Tokyo Empire. However, everything that Shinra creates is unfortunately subject to his knowledge and creativity, and he's not an architect. So the first time that he does this, the Tokyo Empire that he creates crumbles immediately. But that's fine, because time doesn't move linearly to Shinra Bancho Man. Shinra, upon realizing that the Tokyo Empire he created was crumbling, simply grabs time, reverses it, and tries over and over and over again to recreate the Tokyo Empire as it was prior. And this happens so fast that Haumea and the Evangelist don't even know he's tried more than once. And we don't even know how many times he tried. All we know is that when he finally gets it, he says, I'm a little out of it from trying so many times. But how many times would it take you to rebuild an entire city with no architectural knowledge? We can assume it took him thousands of attempts, all of which happened so fast that the collective consciousness of every concept on Earth, AKA God, didn't even see it happen. He then went on to bring back all life to Earth. Everybody who had died during the Second Great Cataclysm, or just in general, was brought back immediately. What do I mean by in general? Everybody who's ever died in Fire Force is brought back like that. Even antagonists are brought back. Extinct animals, people he's never met but only heard of, brought back like that. But not only did he return all life to Earth, he also changed Earth's perception on a couple of key things. See, Shinra realized in a world afraid of death, despair would always reign. Because so long as people were afraid of death, despair would exist within our consciousness. Therefore, Shinra created a world of madness. A world where people's heads would fall off, where zombies could exist. A world where somebody's hand would fall off if they used it too hard. A ridiculous world where the concept of death would never be feared. All in order to make sure that the pillar of despair could never come back. But he went further than this. Shinra Bancho Man also created a god to rule this world, and that god was Lord Death from Soul Eater. Now, mind you, Lord God is a god in all of the correct senses, also has all of the powers of creation. That's how he made Kid Death. And Shinra made Lord Death so this new world would worship 
death. He then in one kick was able to destroy the evangelist, a collection of concepts like the concept of higher dimensions and despair and fear, interacting with and destroying a conceptual being, which some would say is an outer versal feat. And the entity he created in Lord Death was so powerful, it was able to take all of the pyrokinetic abilities from everybody on Earth. That's how powerful Shinra Bancho Man was. He can make other gods. Even now, after Shinner has given up his pyrokinetic abilities, he is still an insanely powerful person, as he's the commander of the hero squad that protects the earth or something. It's kind of a convoluted name. And it was stated that those with strong souls were given equally strong abilities in this new soul world. And it was stated that Captain Obi, because of the strength of his soul, would be able to destroy the earth with one hand. And it was stated that Shinra's soul was even stronger than his. So Shinra is still a planetary threat, even without pyrokinetic ability. But that's not what we're asking about today. How strong is Shinra Bancho Man? Well, if we assume that Sho, who was only one third of this formation, was able to slow the expansion of the entire universe, Shinra Bancho Man held control over all creation. We can assume that his attack power is somewhere around multiversal. But that's not really where Shinra Bancho Man gets his true strength. As we've technically never seen Shinra Bancho Man hit with an attack, there's a possibility it is impossible to hit him. Now, this could have just been because the evangelist was launching despair-based attacks. And as a symbol of hope, despair-based attacks don't work on him. But that's not fun. As Shinner Bancherman has the ability of all creation, anything launched at him, he can simply just catch and turn into something else. So his defense could possibly be irrelevant. But his real truest ability comes in his speed because it's a measure. He has such complete control over time manipulation that he was able to rebuild a city thousands of times before an outer versal being could even understand what was going on. Which leaves us with one final question. Question. Is he beating Goku? Yes. Or no, I genuinely don't give a shit. But now you know how strong he is. And that's really all I'm here to do. But what do you guys think of Shinra Bancho Man? Are you excited for season three of Fire Force? Tell me in the comments below. And while you guys are down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Genuinely, gun to my head, I can only save Soul Eater or Fire Force. I don't know which manga I save. I think probably Soul Eater?